This is the ultimate crash course for the Fusion page in Resolve 18.5. We're gonna take a look at everything from the interface to nodes and basic compositing techniques, and we're gonna have a lot of fun along the way. My name's Casey, I help content creators make amazing things in the Fusion page of DaVinci Resolve. And I have a free video course available, there's a link in the description below, it's called the Fusion Survival Guide. It takes you through some of the most essential tips for actually making things in Fusion, so make sure to check that out. Let's get into the crash course. Shall we? So first things first, what the heck is Fusion? Fusion is a compositing app, which basically means that you can put images together, you can put 3D models together with images and you know put in fog and smoke and lens flares and different skies and do all kinds of visual effects like that. It's also an amazing way to make motion graphics and animated intros and callouts and tracking things and cloning things out, replacing signs and billboards doing green screen, particles, you can combine elements together, you can work in 3D, and I mean, it gets as crazy as you want. You can export your own templates and share them. I mean, it's just, there's no limit on what you can do in Fusion. It's perfect for visual effects, things like green screen, you know, making realistic looking effects, but it's also awesome for graphics and animations and things like that. And the coolest part is that it's built right into the interface of DaVinci Resolve 18.5. And so if you don't know, if you edit with Resolve, anytime you have a clip on your timeline, you can just click on the Fusion page down here, and that will bring that clip into Fusion, and you can do all kinds of effects and animations and that kind of thing without having to export it or convert it. You don't have to render it or anything like that. You're just automatically in this super amazing, powerful workspace where you can do all kinds of amazing stuff. And then when you're ready to put it back into your edit, you just switch to the edit page and there it is. It's beautiful. It's exactly how it should be as far as a workflow in 2023. If you've ever used a compositing app like, you know, After Effects or Photoshop, it does similar stuff, but it's built right into Resolve. And the workflow is just chef's kiss, man. So let's just pick this shot from our timeline here in the edit page. And I'll go down and click Fusion like this, and that'll bring up the Fusion page. And now if you've never used Fusion before, you're probably like, oh gosh, what is this interface? What is what is any of this? Why is any of this? Let me bring up both of these viewers and uh, let's talk about it. Well, probably the first thing you'd notice is these two viewers here. These are where you can view your clip. You can scrub back and forth on the timeline here in the middle. You have the yellow in and out here on the edges. So that's how you scrub back and forth on your clip. And you might be wondering why are there two views of the same thing? Well, it's sort of like the idea of why you'd have two viewers in the edit page, right? In the edit page, we have our timeline viewer on the right, which is what the person who watches our movie is going to see. And then we have the source viewer on the left where we can double click on a clip and kind of bring it up from our media pool and just kind of preview it. It's the same kind of idea in Fusion, except for either of these viewers can be the finished result or it can be just part of our composition. This is gonna make a little bit more sense here in a few minutes. Down below, we have our transport controls, and then we have our toolbar. We'll get into that in just a second. And below that, we have our nodes. If you see the idea of nodes and these kind of flowchart looking things down here, and you start to nope out, and you go, I don't, I don't wanna deal with any of that, that's too complicated, why are we doing this? Just give me a couple minutes to show you how it works because it's not really too complicated, but it is a little bit of a different way of working. So let's jump in and talk about it. By default, if you open a clip from the timeline like we did, you'll have two nodes, a media in and a media out, and they're connected with this yellow line. Each node is one of these little boxes, and each node has one specific job for the most part. And depending on what node you're using, it can have a different job altogether. This node's job, the media in node, its job is to take a clip from our timeline and bring it into Fusion. The second node's job, the media out, is to take whatever we plug into it and bring it back into the edit timeline, okay? So right now, all we're doing is we're taking a clip from our timeline, we're doing nothing with it, and then we're putting it back into the edit timeline. So if we switch over to edit, guess what? Nothing has really changed. Cool, awesome tool, huh? But if we put something in between this, this is where the magic happens. So if we were to go over here and grab like a blur node, I can grab this and drop this in between these two nodes on this line. And now this is connected in between the nodes. So we're running this image through this blur. And now if we go over to the inspector, which works just like the inspector does in the edit page, and we push up the blur size a little bit, that's going to blur our image. So it's just like you would apply an effect 
in the edit page or something like that. It's just contained inside of a little box that you run things through and you kind of make a little flow chart. So we have this blurry image and why is this side not blurry and this side blurry? Well, the reason is because we can select any node and view what it's doing in either of these viewers. This right hand viewer is viewing our media out one. I can tell because well, for one, it says media out one above the viewer, but also these two little dots here under this node, the right one is white. That means that this is loaded in the right viewer. The media in, we have the two dots and the left one is white, which means that it's in the left viewer. We can also see it says media in one right here. And so we can look at our image before it goes through our blur on the left, and we can look at the result of it on the right. And so this is really convenient because we can look at any part of our composition, any node in our whole tree, even if we have 900 nodes, we could look at any node on the left viewer or the right viewer if we wanted to. But I like to keep the left viewer as kind of previewing specific nodes. And I usually put the right viewer for media out because again, it's kind of like the edit page where we have the finished result here on the right and we can look at the pieces and individual clips and stuff on the left kind of the same thing here in fusion so now you might have noticed when i switched over to the edit page we have a blurry image on our timeline that's because it's taking this original clip sending it into fusion running it through this flow chart which includes this blur and then putting it back on the edit page so we can affect these clips in real time that are living on our timeline Okay, so here's another example. We have this beach picture, switch over to Fusion, and I can take one of these icons from the toolbar and just drag this down and make a new node. And we'll just color correct this purple. This isn't typically something you would just do in Fusion, just do a color corrector, but we can really easily see that we're affecting this image. We're starting with our unaffected image and we're turning it purple and that's what we're putting out on the timeline. Pretty awesome stuff. So I can switch back to Fusion and take off our color corrector, switch back to the edit page and it's different. So big whoop, we can blur things and we can turn things purple here in the edit page if we wanted to with effects. Why do we need to go into Fusion? Well, Fusion can do some fancier stuff. So I'll just take off this blur and maybe we wanna do something like cut this lady out and put something behind her. That is a perfect job for Fusion. There are a few different ways we could do this. If this were just a still frame or if this was a much simpler kind of object, we could definitely grab a mask and just connect this mask to our image. And I can just turn it off with this little switch so I can see what I'm doing. And then I could trace her out with a mask like this, and that's going to isolate her. And I could put things behind her and that kind of thing. And again, if I switch back over to the edit page, we have just her isolated, right? But when she moves, that's gonna be a problem. And that's gonna be a whole lot of work to animate this mask. We could totally do that. But in the studio version of Resolve, that's the paid version of Resolve that's $300, we have an effect called Magic Mask. If I go up to my upper left and click on Effects, I have a list of all of the tools that are available in Fusion, and there are a lot. And if I search here, I can say Magic and grab Magic Mask. And I can drag this down into my flow here, and that's going to make a node. And I can pipe the output of this node, that's the little white square, into the magic mask. I'll just drop it on top of it, and I can hit one on the keyboard to see what the magic mask is doing. And then I could just, you know, do something like draw a little shape around her, and that will automatically cut her out using AI. Could mess with some settings, do a little bit of refinement here, and we could track this back and forth, and it will do a pretty good job of cutting her out which if I want to, I could just run this into my media out. So this is what we'll see. I could put that on the edit page and now she's isolated. There's obviously some problems and stuff with it, but it took five seconds. So, but then we could do this and kind of put it over itself as a new layer. And we could do that with a merge node. So a merge node is a node that puts an image over another image. And we could take the output of our media in, drop that on our merge and the output of our magic mask and drop it on the merge and take the output of that and put that into media out. And now we have this layer, our magic mask, being put right over our original footage, which doesn't really look like anything right now, but we could take something like some text and merge that in like this. And now we have a pretty cool effect where she's being put over those letters. And this specific node is only available in the paid version of Resolve, but this is the kind of thing that the Fusion page can do these fancy things. And again, when we're ready to put this back in the edit, we just switch to the edit page and there it is. Morning, very awesome. Such a neat effect with so little effort. Fusion page can also do green screen. So 
we can go from you know green screen like this to a pretty realistic looking comp. We can do my favorite thing, which is like putting a spaceship into a shot. We can do things like clone out parts of shots like you would in Photoshop, but on a video. And it's all done with these nodes. So let's take a step back and just explore how nodes work. I'm gonna make a little room on our interface by going up to workspace and turning off show page navigation. That's just gonna give us a little more real estate because I wanna get crazy down here. So this composite of this spaceship that's outside of the car window and the lady looking out the window at the spaceship, this is all put together with this little flowchart. And again, each node has a specific job. And I'll just hold down shift and kind of drag these out and we can kind of talk about them in a little bit here. Again, anytime that we grab a shot from the timeline, it has a media in and a media out. And you might see all of these nodes and go, gosh, how am I supposed to know all of these nodes and what all of them do? Here's the good news. There's really only like five different kinds of nodes, five different categories. And then, you know, there's a bunch of nodes in each category, but you really only need to understand what kind of category a node is to really do like 90% of what you would want to do in Fusion. The first category would be like a source or an element or a noun or an image. You could probably call this a bunch of different things, but media in is one of those nodes. It's just a image that you kind of start with, a starting point. If you were to go into your media pool and grab an image like a PNG and drag this down into the node graph, that would also make another media in. And I can hit one on the keyboard to bring this up in the left viewer. I can also just click and drag a node into the left viewer to bring it up. But yeah, these kind of nodes do the same thing. They're just loading an image, right? Another kind of node that's similar is a generator node. So up here on this toolbar, if we grab this far left icon, which is called a background, and drag this in, this, if I hit one on the keyboard, I can bring this up, we have a black screen. This generates a solid color. So by default, it's black, but you know, we could make it orange or pink, whatever we want. But really each node has one job. This job of the background node is to make a solid color background. Another node that's kind of like that would be the text plus node. I'll hit one on the keyboard. We don't see anything, but if we go over to the inspector, I type some text. This node's job is to make some text. So anytime you want to make text in Fusion, you pretty much use the text plus node like this, and it makes an image with this generated text. So all of these nodes do similar things. They're either bringing in or creating an image, okay? So these are image nodes. I'll do a fancy thing here in Fusion. If I hit Shift Spacebar, that'll bring up my Select Tool panel. And this is a nice way to just be able to search for any node you want. And I'll type UND, and that's gonna bring up an underlay. If I hit Add, that makes a little box around our nodes, which we can label, and we can kind of move them as a group, that kind of thing. But I'm gonna double click off of that, hold down alt and click on this box and I can hit F2 to rename it and we'll call this image nodes. So these are image nodes. I can right click and set the color for that. So we'll just call these like teal, all right? So that's one kind of node. The next kind of node would be an effect. An effect is something like a blur or a color correction or something that kind of changes an image, right? So these are source images, but an effect changes an image like a blur or a color correction or brightness and contrast, curves, that kind of thing. All of these nodes change images. And so if we run an image through something like a blur, it blurs it. If we run it through a color corrector, it colors it. If we run it through brightness and contrast, it brightness and contrasts it. <laughs> Run it through curves, it curves it, okay? So those are the effect nodes, and you always run an image through an effect. It's really helpful to kind of think about it that way, that an image always runs through an effect. You don't put an effect on top, you don't add an effect to it. Any kind of effect node, you run an image through it. Now, a similar node to a effect node would be a transform node. Here, kind of in the middle, we have this little icon with the two little arrows. This is a transform node. If we grab this and drag that down and put that in between our media in and media out, this image runs through the transform just like an effect. But what this transform does is it can scale it, rotate it, change its position, that kind of thing. And what's really neat about that is that you can build things in a modular way. You can think about this like as a flowchart, right? First, I want this image. Then I want to scale and rotate it and move it. And then, you know, you could have another transform if you want to and, you know, size it up and that kind of thing. And so you're taking it, rotating it and scaling it, and then you're scaling it some more and then you're putting it out to the timeline. And then you can turn off any of these nodes in any order you want to see the result of it with or without the nodes. 
If you're familiar with the color page, it's a very similar way of working. It's very modular. So you kind of build things in steps and at any time you can rearrange them, turn them off or on, add or take away things to get a different result. So that's kind of its own kind of node as a transform node. We'll just make an underlay here to keep things consistent. There we go, transform node. The next type of node would be a merge node. So right under our transport controls here, to the right of this second divider, we have this little icon. This is a merge node. I can grab this and drag this down. And this node has one job, and its job is to put an image over an image. So you start by kind of running an image through it like an effect, but then you put another image on top. And so maybe I'll have an image like media in two, this flying saucer. I can take the output of that, that's the little gray square, and drop that on my merge after I've ran my background through it, like this, and now I have one image over another. Now, if you're like me when I was first getting into Fusion, about this point you'd be like, why in the world does it take so much effort to put an image over another image? Where are the layers? Why can't you just drag an image on top of another image? Why all this? Why do I have to hook things up, put a merge node in here, and take this output and put this into the input and all that. Why do I have to mess with that? And I understand that sentiment. Before this, I was big into compositing with After Effects back in the day. I've used Photoshop quite a bit. In fact, even in the edit page, you could take a clip like this and drag a UFO on top of it. And it's not that hard. It takes like two seconds to put a layer over another layer, even in the edit page. So why is it so complicated in Fusion? If Fusion's so powerful, what the heck, man? Well, the idea here is that you have lots and lots of control. So not only are you putting an image over another image, but you can tell it in the workflow here exactly where to do it. And you can even use the same image and put it over itself a bunch of different times. And so you can essentially kind of duplicate things just by making new merge nodes and using the same image, which is very, very powerful. The other thing is that if you bring an image into your flow and you want to merge it over something else, you can actually just take the output of this node and drag it onto the output of whatever you want to merge it over like this. I can just drop it on this white square and then boom, it makes that merge node and you don't have to mess with stuff. So it's actually just about as fast as dragging a layer on top of another layer. So it's really not as bad as it seems like it might be. And after a while, once you get working with nodes, you'll realize how nice it is to work this way and to have this control over exactly how the image pipeline goes together. One thing to mention at this point is all of these nodes have these little triangles and a little white or gray square. What are these things? What's that about? Well, the white or gray square is the output of the node. So this is going to connect to whatever comes next. So anytime you grab the output of a node, you're piping the image that it makes into the next node, wherever that is, okay? For the inputs, there are different colors. And the colors are very, 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 very important. Usually the main input for a node is yellow and the secondary input is green. And you can kind of figure out what the colors mean just by mousing over them. There's a little pop-up. So this is merge one background. So for the merge, the yellow is the background and the green is the foreground. And so whatever image I have connected to the green, that's gonna be on top. It doesn't really matter which direction anything goes. I can put these nodes wherever they want it's all about the color that it's connected to. And so you have to be really careful which colored input you put into the node that you're using because it can do different things. For a lot of effect nodes, they only have a couple inputs, the yellow, which is the main input, and then the blue, which is the effect mask. Speaking of masks, let's talk about a mask. A mask is just a way to limit what a node does to an area of the screen. For instance, this merge node, it has one job. Its job is to put this flying saucer over the background. If I want to only tell this to do that at a certain place, I can grab something like, I don't know, an ellipse mask and take the output of that ellipse mask and put that into the blue input of the merge. And now it's only going to merge that image over inside of that mask, right? And so that's really cool, again, because you have lots and lots of control over exactly what your node is doing and where it's doing it. So putting a mask on a node is basically just saying, hey node, whatever you're doing, just do it right here inside of the mask. And that works for any kind of node. So a merge node only merges inside of the mask. A media in node only loads the media inside of that mask. If we put this on an effect node, it's only going to do that effect inside of the mask. Lots and lots of control. So those are kind of the fourth and fifth kinds of nodes. We have our merge node and our masks, and there's a few different kinds of masks depending on what you're after. But these are really the five like major kinds of nodes. There are a few other ones, 
But these are the main categories that you need to know about. And what's cool is you can kind of think about how you would put a image together using these categories. For instance, if we have our green screen, we're gonna want a background of some kind. So I'll grab this office background from our media pool and just drag that in. And we have two image nodes here, our media in one, which is our green screen. I'll just hit F2 to rename that. And our media in two, which is our office background. Bring that up on the left viewer. And now we can think about what we wanna do. We wanna put this green screen clip over this background. So we can do that by just disconnecting our green screen from our media out taking our office background into our media out. And so now this is our clip and we can take our green screen and put it over by dragging the output over the output like that. That'll make a merge node. Again, the foreground is connected to the green. The background is connected to the yellow. And let's say we want to get rid of the green. We can run this through an effect. I'll just hit shift space bar and type keyer. And there are a bunch of different keyers here. We're gonna use something called the Delta keyer. That's kind of the main green screen keyer inside of Fusion. And I'll just grab our background here, get rid of our background. Green screen is like its own huge world. But basically you can go through and adjust your settings and refine your selection to where you get a really nice selection of your subject. And I can hit two on the keyboard and bring this up. And now we have our green screen gone and we have our subject here over our background. And then again, we just think of this in steps. We want to get rid of the background and now we wanna make him smaller. So we can use a transform node. I'll just grab this and drag this down in between our keyer and our merge. And we can just scale him down put him over here. And maybe we don't like this framing. Maybe we want to put this in a 16 by nine crop. We can do that a lot of different ways. One way we could do that is just add a crop node like this. And for our size, 1920 by 1080, we could transform our background, transform our foreground and kind of resize things. Maybe we want our background a little bigger. Maybe we want to flip it, move our foreground guy around a little bit too, to get this looking just how we want. And now the colors don't match. He's too low contrast. And so we can color correct our foreground anywhere we want in this chain. I'd recommend right after the keyer, we could do something like grab our brightness and contrast and drop that in. Anytime you're color correcting something in Fusion, you wanna make sure you pre-divide and post-multiply. So I'll click on that. And here we can color correct this just by pushing up the contrast, a little bit of saturation, pushing up the gain, maybe take the gamma down a little bit. And now we have a much better match with our background. And you see how we're kind of building this in steps we have our green screen and then we key it, then we do our color correction, then we transform it, then we put it over our merge and then we merge it over our background, which is also transformed. And then we crop it and then we put it out to the timeline. So we're kind of making our own little flow chart here that we can easily read and find all the steps for what we've made. And at any point we could take one of these and turn it off or turn it on, rearrange it, do all of those things and see all the little parts. It's all laid out here in a map. And it's a really, really nice way to work. Maybe we decide our background is too sharp. So maybe after our transform, we can put a blur. We'll take this blur and just push it up a little bit just to give a little softness to our background. Here's before and here's after. Makes it look a little bit more realistic. And we just build this in little parts. Very cool. We've been looking at some visual effects stuff in Fusion, but we can also do a lot of motion graphics and things like that. For instance, we have this little subscribe animation where a cursor comes in and clicks that subscribe button just like that. And this is made in pieces. We start with a red rectangle and we're using that same shape and kind of changing its color, changing its position, and then putting it under itself. Then we're color correcting that gray and animating that color correction where it starts red and then we're turning it gray. We're putting this over a background that we generated Then we're putting text on top of that and we're putting our animated cursor over that. Speaking of animation, you can animate pretty much anything in Fusion. All you have to do is go to a frame where you want to set a value. Let's just animate a transform. You can select this and go to the inspector and you can click on one of these diamonds to add a keyframe. And this works just like it does in the other pages of Resolve. So maybe we'll just keyframe the angle. And when this is orange, we're on a keyframe. That's just telling Fusion that at whatever frame we're at, which is frame 20, we want angle to be zero. Then we can move to a different frame like, I don't know, frame 25, and we can change that angle. And now that's gonna animate in between those two keyframes. So here at frame 20, we're at zero, and then it turns at frame 25. And that's pretty much how everything is animated inside of Fusion. There's a way to look at what you have animated in the spline panel and the keyframes panel. The spline panel is a graph of your animation, and you can pick the keyframes and kind of adjust how they animate in between each other, whether you want them to animate quickly or slowly or slow down and stop or stop really suddenly. You have a lot of control here. 
And in the keyframes panel, you can adjust the timing of your different elements. And you can also trim any node to only happen at a certain time. So here we have our brightness and contrast, which turns things gray. And that's starting at frame 23. And so rather than keyframing that color correction, we're just turning on that node at frame 23. So we turn on that color correction node and it turns it black and white. There are so many tools inside of Fusion, so many cool things that you're able to do, and we're just barely scratching the surface. There's a whole 3D workspace where you can move things around in 3D and use 3D cameras and everything like that. I mean, it's just wild. And if you're a content creator looking to learn Fusion, groundcontrol.film is the place you wanna be. We have all kinds of training on Fusion that'll take you from not really knowing much of anything about compositing to being able to create whatever you wanna create. We have a free mini course called the Fusion Survival Guide that'll teach you my top tips for working with nodes, we have a course on pro compositing and visual effects in Fusion, and we have new Fusion educational content coming out all the time. But for now, definitely check out the mini course. There's a link in the description. And hopefully by now you understand enough about nodes to kind of jump in and get out of your comfort zone a little bit. Fusion is so much fun because it really allows you to do anything. You can use this free tool that's built in DaVinci Resolve to make some awesome movie magic. You know what I'm saying? So cool. Whew. So I know that's a lot to take in. Fusion is a very, very powerful app. I also have a ton of other videos on Fusion here on this channel. And yeah, I hope this helps inspire you to make something awesome and be creative and, you know, do the movie magic. Cause that's what it's about, man. So much fun. And I had fun being here and you can have, you had fun too. And so we're basically, we're basically best friends now.